experience. Every time somebody starts doing that, our stats go down. Why? Because it's unattractive. It's not transcendental. It's it, somebody's on the mental platform and they're just speculating. And they're like, you know, all over the universe. You know, why does this happen? And why is life like that? We'll read Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> you want to know why life is like that? Read the, read the scriptures. Everything is explained, you know. We don't have to answer all these questions. But they'll say, no, I want you to answer my question. <laughs> you know? But that's like, you know, I, I used to have a martial arts teacher. Uh, Chinese guy, and when people would complain like that, he'd say, oh, baby is crying again. <laughs> <laughs> Baby's crying. Why? When the baby cries, he wants the mommy to fix the problem. Right? So, some people come, and they have all these confusions and problems, and they want us to, like, fix, the, fix it for them. You know, but we're not in that mood. You know, there's a saying, if you feed somebody a meal, you solve their problem for tonight. But if you teach them how to cook, then you solve the problem for the rest of their lives. So that's our mood. We don't want to solve your problem today. We want to give you the tools to solve all your problems permanently. This is a, a much bigger deal, you know? It's a much, much larger field of inquiry that we are dealing in than just, you know, I want to get through the day. We're teaching you how to solve all problems permanently. Make a permanent solution to all the problems of life. And then you won't have to deal with uh, the uh, undesirable consequences of acting in opposition to Krishna's purposes. Huh? Well, what is it about karma that's so nasty? It's because we don't anticipate the consequences of our actions. We think, oh, I just, uh, just want to get more money. No problem. I'll just hold up this store, you know. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Well, why are these police arresting me? I didn't want that. You see? Well, that's an extreme example. But um, take the, the typical example of the, the average ordinary person who thinks, oh, I'm a very nice person. I try not to offend anybody. I go to my job every day and I work, you know, and then I go out to lunch and eat a hamburger, and I can't understand why I'm suffering. You know, I'm a good person. No, you're not a good person. <laughs> you rascal. You're paying people to kill cows. See? So if you pay people, if you can understand it, if you pay somebody to go out and kill someone that you don't like, then the police are going to arrest both of you. Huh? Both you and the one you pay. Both of you are guilty. So if we pay people to kill cows, then we're also guilty. It's murder for hire. Huh? Murder incorporated. <laughs> really? Yeah, right. So there's karma associated with that. And we have to suffer the results of that karma. And we think, oh, but I didn't do anything. Yeah, you did. You did. You caused suffering to some living entities. So, actually, causing suffering to other living entities is unavoidable. You know? But last night, I, I went to the bathroom in the middle of the night. It was this huge spider. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, boy, was he ugly, too. <laughs> ah. You know, so out comes the broom. Yeah. We have to do it, right? So... We can't avoid creating suffering for other living entities. But if we offer the results of our work to Krishna, then to the, to the percentage or to the degree that we dedicate everything we do to Krishna, we are released from the karma of those activities. 
You know, it's like you have to keep pounding this in. <laughs> People don't get, oh, well, okay, I can give $5 at Sunday uh, at church, and then I'm released from all I can. No. No. How much did you make last week? A thousand dollars? And you offer five dollars in the plate at church? No, sorry. You know. Prabhupada said, even for householders, the standard is fifty percent. Fifty percent for householders. And for brahmacharis, hundred percent. Brahmachari means that you live with the spiritual master, and if you collect anything, you offer everything. This is not to make the spiritual master rich or anything. This is to protect you from the results of your activities. Huh? Because what is the spiritual master going to do? He's going to spend it on the service of Krishna. That's what spiritual master does. He doesn't have anything else to do. Huh? So, by spending all of our energy on the service of Krishna, we're released from all of our karmic rea reactions. That means we're in the liberated position. Huh? It's this practical thing. It's practical. It's down to earth. It's right here, right now. It's not just a theory. It's not just some woo-woo ceremony, you know. No. It's a practical thing with what we do with our actual material resources because if we don't spend them on worship of Krishna we spend them on worship of ourselves and then we have to pay the karmic results it's that simple it's a choice we make in every transaction am I going to do this for myself or am I going to do it for Krishna uh, we, we were just thinking because we were moving all our stuff you know hey we got a lot of stuff Actually, we don't have very much stuff compared with most people. But it seems like we have a lot of stuff. Because our desires are very simple. We just, we just want to have a place to stay and a little prasadam and a chance to chant Hare Krishna. But because we're preaching, we have cameras and computers and desk and this and that and all this stuff. It would be even worse if we if we didn't have computers and we had printed books. Can you imagine? All these books, oh, they're so heavy. Yeah, but we have so many books on the computer now. If we had them in, in made out of dead trees, <laughs> it would be like a ton of books. Forest. Literally a ton of stuff. So actually, we have very little stuff. The people who used to live in the house before us are moving out. And man, they got all kinds of useless stuff. Just, you know, like 50 different stuffed animals and, you know, for the kids and like that, you know. We need, all we need is one stuffed lion. <laughs> <laughs> so, the art of devotional service is how to engage our resources and our energy and perform our activities so that all the results are dedicated to Krishna's purposes, not our purposes. Uh, or when our purposes become the same as Krishna's purposes, then it's all right. Uh, I may think, oh, I really want, uh, you know, like right now we're working on getting together a really nice recording studio. Why? Because we want to make beautiful music to glorify Krishna's holy name. You know, so beautiful that, that nobody can resist it. That everybody feels like, oh, this is the most beautiful music I ever heard. Uh, and it's about Krishna. So, normally if someone was doing this, it would be because, oh, I want to make a hit record. Or I want to impress my friends and make this really cool music. Uh, but we don't care about that. We, we, yeah, we want to impress people, but we want to impress people for Krishna's glorification, not for our glorification. Uh, that's why we don't go out and do concerts and stuff like that. We don't care about all of that uh, fan stuff. And, and just like, 
useless. Because that would just keep us in this material world. If we become interested in material fame, reputation, and stuff like that, that's just going to make it harder to get out of this material world. Our purpose is to go back to the spiritual world and be with Krishna, and serve Krishna eternally. So we want to disconnect our activities from our false ego, our material existence, and attach those same activities to our eternal service relationship with Krishna. Uh, and we want to do that 100% purely. That's what it means to be a pure devotee. A pure devotee is somebody who doesn't do anything for their own well-being or, or aggrandizement outside of what's required for their service.